but they can go three places anywhere in time. What three places and why? People don't know what we just discovered. (laughs) When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. How do we start this? You don't want to start this. It's your show. I feel like you have to start it. Hi, Matt. What's your name? (laughs) My name's Matt. What are we doing? We are doing a podcast. About what? Time travel. Ooh, why? Because I am obsessed with it. Uh, How long have you been obsessed with time travel? Uh, Probably since I watched. Wait, can I guess? Back to the Future. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like the movie. It is the movie. Do you think there are better movies about time travel? I think yes. Okay. As far as the way it works. Yeah, because Back to the Future doesn't work. It doesn't at work. all. No. It doesn't work at all. No. But like surprisingly, Bill and Ted works. That's an interesting concept that I'm <laughs> happy to get into. <laughs> It's been a while since I've watched it, but when they're doing the thing where they're like, remind me to put this there, and then it's there, mm-hmm. like, I just am like, yeah, that that's how it would work. You would be in the loop. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. Back to the Future is weird. It, it, it tackles a lot of things, in my opinion. One is like meeting yourself. Okay. Or being in the same, I guess he doesn't meet himself, but he's in the same, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it's weird to me. Do you think, which one of the Back to the Futures do you think gets it the most correct? I don't know the answer to that, but I think that the third one sticks out to me because it affects more than him. They like change history. I mean, they change history in the first one, too, because you go to two and you get to the future. Version yeah, that's where true. Biff has the sports book. That's true. Which is, you know, a different timeline, an alternate reality, you right. could say. And so, I mean, in the third one, they just even go further back in time. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, then Doc never comes back. Right. That's a weird concept. Right? Yeah. So Emmett Brown dies in 1885. And so if he dies in 18... See, now it gets so confusing. (laughs) Because when does he die? Exactly. That's fine. I don't know. What do you think about Looper? Looper's really good. Like Looper in terms of time travel? I do. I like the... It's like it was fresh. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea. Because then you're meeting yourself. You're literally, your job is to meet yourself and kill yourself. Yeah. Right? They kill somebody immediately. I don't know if it's them. Oh, yeah. Bruce Willis is. It's yeah. been a long time since. I've That's seen why they call it Looper. Yeah. They're closing the loop. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph Gordon love it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he looks like Bruce Willis with the nose job in that? I think they did a pretty good job about it. I, I don't know if it's just hard for me to not see Joseph Gordon Levitt or if it was it was a little disturbing to watch him be in that makeup for ninety minutes. Yes. But I think they did do a pretty good job yeah. about I'd be like, okay, this guy grows into Bruce Willis, I'd give him that. I think it's the hair. I think it's there. I think just I just think that Joseph Gordon Levitt has a round face, like a right. round head, and Bruce Willis has an oval head. Yeah. And so you can't do a whole lot about that. Some contouring maybe. Maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is a good time travel movie? Hmm. I don't know. Um, this is a weird thought that just popped inside my brain. Would you consider The Matrix a time travel movie? It's been a while. <laughs> Did you see the yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because it's not time travel because time always is moving forward. But they are stuck in a certain time, even though the present is the future. So like every time they're in the Matrix, they're like back in the past. Right. But the Matrix is its own thing. 
that's not necessarily they're not actually in the past, but they are reliving the past that was constructed for them by the machines. And so you could argue that every time they go into the matrix, they're going back in time. And every time they're outside of the matrix, they're going into the future. But are they actually traveling back in time? No, they're just doing it in their minds, but they are in a different reality, which, you know, could be argued that it's time travel. But that's not really a good answer to is it a time travel movie? Yeah, I'm going to say it's not a time travel movie. That's fair. But I see your point. I don't know. It was just the first thing that popped in my head. In terms of other time travel movies, I mean, what do we got? We have Back to the Future. Bill and Ted is a great example that I wouldn't have thought of. Looper. The the Time Machine. The Time Machine. Both of them. You haven't seen those. The Hot Tub Time Machines? No. The original Time Machine movie. And they remade it again with that Guy Pierce in the mid-2000s. I have not seen that, no. And then you've got like Time Bandits. And then there's that, there's Predestination, came out in 2014 with Ethan Hawke. There is the one with the guys, the engineers in their garage that's really low budget. I forget the name of it. It's a one word name like Looper. Okay. I don't know. What about like Interstellar? Would you consider that a time travel movie? Yes. So like is Inception time travel? No, Be, but I don't because think, the I don't dreams think are slower. Yeah, I don't think they travel. So they don't. They're not traveling back in time. They're just slowing time, right? So they're they're getting smaller. Is how I think of it, right? You know what I mean? Like as they go down into a dream, their world expands, and then it expands, and then it expands, and then it expands. It's like looking deeper and deeper down a microscope. I will. A, I will say, Interstellar does the best job at showing the weight of time travel. I think it's just the weight of long distance travel. Right. Because no matter how you do it, like the further we get from earth, supposedly, well, it's physics. (laughs) I know the slower you, the slower you age. Right. So it's all relativity. Mm -hmm. And like, so that is a that is a real thing that we're going to have to like deal with as a species as once Elon finally takes us to Mars. You know what I mean? Like relative to us on Earth, Martians are going to age slower. Yeah. Because time would be different. It's like when astronauts go up into space, they come back down, they're like a few minutes younger than the people on Earth. And that was like the whole thing about interstellar. And it's interesting, like, I've been reading. Um, but are the, they? Because they live, they're still living. Yeah, but it's relative to, time is relative to where you are in the world. Or where you are in space. So it's like, we measure time by light, right? Like, how fast light can travel. Yeah. Like, a light year is, yeah. is the fastest thing that right. we can travel. So it's relative to where we are in space um, with each other. So like you and I are not technically in the same reality, even though we are very, very close to each other. It's like, you know, hundreds of millions of milliseconds apart, but it is different just based on the 10 feet that we're sitting from each other. And there's, man, there's a famous, he's a British... I wish I knew his name. He's a British physicist and he explains this really well. And like a lot of like social media themes and he can actually do a test of like measuring a watch and a light going back and forth and like show you how different it is. But I couldn't explain it to you right now because I'm not a scientist and I don't know. Yeah. I can't even understand interstellar. I've been reading this, these, this book series called foundation by, It was written by Isaac Asimov in like the 50s, but Apple released a series of it on Apple TV and it's big and beautiful and scientific and like they deal. So the whole point there is humanity is spread across the galaxy. Like we've taken over the galaxy and it's so I think the year is like 
11,000 something, right? So far off that we don't even know where Earth is anymore. Like they have no idea where it is. They don't know where they came from. It's like, but they're all across the galaxy. And so like traveling between planets can cause problems. And so they have either like hyperspace jumps, right? Which they can travel faster than the speed of speed of light, or they have to go by like slow ship, which is just, you're in a, a, like, like you're basically in a tiny little refrigerator and you get shot off into space and it takes you a hundred years to get to whatever planet you're going to. And then you open up and it's like, you haven't, you're like cryogenically frozen for a hundred years. And it's interesting how they're playing with that in the TV show because the book series takes place over like 300 years, I think like this, like a time span. And that's hard to do in TV because you don't have any of the like original characters. You can't have characters come back from like season to season. So the way that they're getting around it, which I think is a very smart move, is they're using these like slow ships. And so like people get sent off to other worlds it takes them a hundred years to get to that world but they have an age so you can keep the same actor playing the same character but you can introduce all these new characters into the story that come in like in books two and three and stuff like that which are farther down the line which is kind of a smart way yeah, yeah. yeah of doing it as opposed to like recasting every season 12 monkeys yes awesome time travel movie it's been a long time since I've seen. 12. And then they made a series about it. Okay. It was like, it lasted four seasons, but they did something awesome. It's like one of those episodes, it's like that episode of Futurama we were talking about where it's like, I'll never watch it again. It's so sad. It's kind of on that level, but not really. But his, basically his best friend gets left. Oh yeah. Okay. In some kind of time, in some time in an, in an episode. It ends. I think the episode ends. It's been a while since I've watched it. And so like the second or the, the next episode, you're just like, watch him go through. Now he's stuck in this timeline and you just watch like 40 years of his life, maybe more, but like 40 to 60 years of his life. And he kind of starts out of like understanding is like one of those like sacrificial choices. Mm hmm. But then you're watching everything that happens to him and you slowly watch him become. And then he ends up being like the big bad that they haven't revealed yet. And they do it all in an episode because it's been like 60 years to him. Mm -hmm. So by the time he gets back to them, I forget how he's now like, and I was like, that's impressive how they did that. Yeah. But I think that's cool because like, I don't know, maybe time travel is a cheat, but it also allows for, more interesting storytelling like you were talking about with that show. It's interesting. Cho- it forces you to make interesting choices. Yeah. Right. And especially with the limitations of like, well, we can't recast our lead, one of our lead actors every season. Unless you're game of Thrones. But game of Thrones made good choices too, that I really liked. They like merged characters together that weren't ever in the books. And you got to see these characters come together, which is pretty awesome. Like my favorite was Tywin Lannister and Arya. And the books don't ever. Come. I haven't seen Game of Thrones. Okay. Well. I saw the first season and they killed off the whole reason why I was watching. And I gave up. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's fair. Um, but they, but brought two cool. char- they brought two characters together. This happened in the first season. Okay. When they're at Heron Hall, and she's like his page boy, basically. She's hiding out in Heron Hall. That doesn't happen in the books, but like, what a great opportunity to like put these two characters together that you don't see in the books purely out of necessity because you don't have enough money to have a cast of 500 or whatever. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. And so you have to like, how do you follow the storyline? with the characters that you have. And in that instance, at least I thought that was a really fun way to do that. Cause part of Arya's story is being at Heron Hall. Um, and so it was Arya's story arc, but they just brought in Tywin, which was great to have those characters, um, together. 
So, but you read the Game of Thrones. I did. This is like I've noticed this is like a pattern for you. You like series books. I do. I like big, fat, stupid novels, like <laughs> fantasy novels. I do. I like them all. But but, but I you're gotta not wait. like a purist because there's a lot of people that be like, don't change the books. Because there's a lot of people that got an uproar about the changes they made to Hunger Games. That's a not, well, it's a teen, whatever. But like a movie formula is totally different than a book formula. Like you have to, like you said, you have to make changes mm -hmm. to fit. But you don't seem to be too upset when they do that. I'm not. I'm really not. I, I think it's interesting how they make those choices. And I think I just understand that you have to do it. Right when you're changing a medium and you don't have like with a book, you've got, you can paint this whole world in your brain and it only costs you, you know, the cost of a typewriter and your time. Right. Whereas like in a movie, you got like 200 people to put this thing together and that's a lot of money. And I understand that you can't spend all that money. And so you have to get creative with it. And I think that is one of the things that I really like when they do those adaptations and things like that. Um, have they made changes to this new show on Apple? Oh yeah. Uh, the emperor being cloned is a huge change mm. that doesn't have, it doesn't happen at all in the books. And I think it's a brilliant new addition and like, and then other stuff as well. Uh, they changed some other major characters, but you have to, yeah. You just have to. Yeah. I mean, I think I just go into it knowing that, like, this is not the same thing. I'm going to have some of the uh, same original people and, like, you know, but I'm also going to get some different. Do you wait? I, I hate that this is going to be known because it's going to be whatever, but I like to read the book after. After. Two reasons. I can see, like, the character better for some reason, instead of me making up one, I'll be disappointed. Like my dad all the time talks about the Jack Reacher. I mean, is that what it is? Jack Ryan? No, no, no. Jack Reacher is a person. Jack Reacher. Yeah. Is another book series and mm -hmm. show, but it was movies with Tom Cruise. Yeah. Harrison, Reacher. Harrison Ford was Jack Ryan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tom Cruise was Reacher. And my dad was always like, no, he's like six, four. In the books. So people get like whatever. But then I know that they're going to make changes. So if I watch the movie f or the TV show first, when I go to read the book, it's like deleted scenes mm -hmm. or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like more content. Yes. So That's interesting. Less disappointment. Yeah, I get it. Huh. I think I... I think I would prefer to read first, but like with Game of Thrones, I watched the first season of the TV show and then I was like going on like a three week backpacking trip to Europe and I loved the show so much. I was like, I'm actually going to read this book while I'm on trains in Europe. And so I bought the first book and I burned through it while I was over there and bought the second one in Europe and like got like halfway through the second one before I got home. And then I think I read all of them before the second season came out. I can't do stuff like that. And that's what worries about me about this Apple show is that it's like, it's so many characters and they all, if they were just like Jim and John and Dave, but they're like Taiwan and it's Lannister not, and it's not, Lifidiva, and I can't keep up. And they're like, we have to go to the town of Herodabaha. And I'm like, I need normal names. I can't register. I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, oh, you remember like two seasons ago when they were over in Land Hufana? And I'm like, no, because these these are these don't resonate with me. Yeah, I get it. Um, and Game of Thrones is terrible about that. This is not. Foundation is not. It's you've got one, two, three, three emperors. I'm just gonna call them Empire. Their aid. One lead, two leads, three leads. So you're looking at like seven, a main cast of seven that you're following. And then secondary characters that change a lot throughout. So it's not as hard as you think. It's not anywhere near as big as 
Game of Thrones was. Okay, so why are we doing this? Yeah, that's a great question. So, like, I always find this question fascinating because of my love for time travel and because of where the conversation leads, because I never know where it's going to lead. But I ask people, if they had a time machine okay, and they have to come back, but they can go three places anywhere in time, what three places and why? So they have to come back to the present. Yeah. So if like you so had a fourth trip. Okay. Basically. So if you had a time machine in this room and I get to pick, I like say, okay, I'm going to go here, here, here. And I go on my little phone booth and then dial up the number and then poof, I'm gone. And then poof, I'm back. And I was like, oh man, let me tell you about my adventures. Right. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> question number one: Can I take stuff with me, or am I like Terminator going back naked? Oh, I think we should definitely go at least clothed. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can't take like a car. Sure. And if you take money, that's going to be kind of irrelevant. What are you taking? Well, I think to to like fix the like I want to have a billion dollars, you know what I mean, for when I get back. I think I would take money and go back to like 1955 or whenever like Warren Buffett was around and just invest in Vanguard when he just started his but company. But you can't invest in 1970s money with 2023 money. That's why I'm asking the question. Well, I'm just saying logistically, even if you could take it back, a 20 20- $23 looks a lot different than a $1971. That's true. <laughs> but could I take They're going to have a magnetic... You're going to be like, here's this magnetic strip. And they're like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> what is this toy money you <laughs> yeah, brought me? Yeah. Oh, simpler times. Uh, okay. So I can't take stuff back. The goal... All right, let me put it this way. The goal would be to invest in... Vanguard, or what is his company? Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's just to invest in Berkshire, you know, whenever he started, and then just let it roll. Like you don't have to do anything other than like, hey, here's a thousand bucks, and by the time you get to this point, you have his kind of money, and so it's like the guaranteed lottery ticket. But I guess what you're saying is, how do I get the thousand dollars? Right. Well, my question would be, you cannot use today's money. You can't use credit card. You can't write a check. You can't do any of that stuff. You, you How are you going to figure out how to get the money? Which is the hard part. Because like, mm-hmm. you know that that's the sure thing. Yeah. As soon as I get them $1,000, I'm golden. But how do you get that $1,000? I think I just have to like... Work. Good go to Omaha and like sweep floors at like a soda shop. <laughs> Take nickels off the high schoolers. Yeah. Uh, so you'll be there for a while. Yeah. It's a, okay. So how do you get stuff in the fifties and sixties? I don't know. What skill set do I have now that translates? You could be an actor. You could bring, you could bring, because you act. Mm -hmm. You could like, when did method acting start? Oh, I don't know. I'm not that good of an actor. (laughs) You're better than like, you'll be like, hey, we don't have to do the transcontinental, transatlantic accent when we act. We can just be ourselves. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> you can pioneer that whole thing. Yeah, but that's like the studio era of Hollywood. So I'd need yeah. to go get like a contract with like Warner Brothers. And they still like, do contracts. Yeah, but like this was like the gold right. age of contracts. Right. Um, so I'd have to do that. I don't know. I mean, it's Nebraska. What do you do? Steal a bunch of corn, sell a pig, like steal a pig yeah. and sell it at auction. And maybe I just work for him. Like, hey, what can I do for you? Let me let me help you 
with your business and give me a 1% stake for a year or something. I don't know. But then you have, you'll have you have to be like good to mm-hmm. prove that you deserve a 1% stake. Sure. And then he's going to, if you're good, he's going to want to promote you and then you're stuck. What are you just going to like disappear on him? And then you show up now out of nowhere and he's still around. He's not dead. Yeah. And he's like, I owe you what? Where have you been for the last 70 years? I don't know. This is, this is (laughs) so, This is sad because it's making me realize, like, what skill sets do I have? No, you have great skill sets. I'm just saying, like, we're all, like, victims of our own time. Sure. Okay, so I don't have any money. Uh, I have answers to other questions, to to other choices. That I think I might have a little, I might be able to offer a little bit more. I think it would be very fun to go with Lewis and Clark on their journey across America. Um, I think that would be a pretty awesome adventure and to be able to see like this country that we live in, like untouched, still managed by the natives and like just the sheer beauty of it all has got, it would have to be insane. It would have to be amazing. Um, And in terms of like that, I feel like it's probably just a little bit more manual labor based of like, yeah, we need it. And we need you to like pull this raft up the Mississippi or the Missouri as we're going upstream. And like, yeah, I could probably sign on to do that. And like, hey, load this wagon with our jerky and cornmeal. Like, sure, I can do that. So I think that, in terms of how am I going to like survive and like be on it is probably a little bit more feasible than somehow trying to get a thousand dollars to, I mean, you still have to convince Warren Buffett people to let a stranger go on a trip with them that they probably rationed everything. It wasn't just them. Well, yeah, they had like a team of like 30 people going on. They probably knew it was a huge expedition. So what is it about that? that interests you the most. I think. And now you've been camping all over and hiking all over this country. Yeah. And I think it stems from that. I think it, but you've seen what they, they saw, but not, not through those eyes of like, you don't know, like you don't know what's going to happen of like, and I think the the weirdest thing for me would be like, oh yeah, we're in Montana. <laughs> you don't know this yet. <laughs> yeah, but we're and they're in like, Montana. what do we call this place? What about Montana? <laughs> what about Michael Tana? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think that I think that aspect of it would be would be very very cool. And so, like, yes, I have been camping and all that kind of stuff all over this country. And I've been very blessed the places that I've been, but like to see it from that perspective. And also like you're walking from St. Louis to. Is that where they started? Yeah. Oh, St. Louis. I don't know. I feel like every place in Missouri claims to be the, the but place they started they in Missouri. Have, yeah. They're Missouri boys. Nah, I don't know about that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, there's a place. So Missouri, St. Louis is in between the Mississippi River that goes north and south, and like the Missouri River that comes down. Um, and on the other side of Missouri is a place called St. Charles, and there's a whole like park, the Lewis and Clark Park, and it's like the start of everything. So it was it St. Louis. So where did they end? I want to say it was in like San Francisco or like somewhere in Oregon. Because there's a well, because when I lived in Portland, there was Lewis, Lewis and Clark Lewis. College. Then it's probably somewhere in Oregon, like maybe Portland. Yeah. Because I know they went north. They went like up into Montana and like ended in the Pacific Northwest. I think because. One of them killed themselves after it. 
So some shit went down. I did not realize that. Yeah. What happened? Don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I think because I lived in Portland and it's like the suicide rate's crazy because there's no sun and there's no vitamin D. They had to have spent some time there. Probably a long time. Yeah. And maybe it was just that. Maybe it was just a vitamin vitamin D deficiency that they weren't used to because they were exploring a new place that didn't have it. Or it could have just been like, I mean, I don't know. When I think Lewis and Clark, I kind of think that what was the what was the movie that DiCaprio finally won it for? Oh, uh, where he was like the grizzly man. Yeah. Like, I think it's like that. Yeah. That it's like just rough. I think it's rough, but I think they like. I don't know. You don't go on a like an expedition like that without. I mean, they were s- funded by the U.S. government, right? They had guides. They had like Native American guides along the way, and but it's still hard. Yeah, but you're not like out there by yourself fighting grizzly bears, one on one, like Leo was. What was the name? I was like, it's something D. That's Something right. with a D. Yeah, but not the departed. No. And not like it's divergent like, or, or deliverance. No, none of those. It's like deception. I don't know. We'll think of it after we're done doing this. Yeah. But yeah, I I, I think that would be a I want to go on adventures, and I think that would be a cool adventure. I think my third answer would be and this is one where I would really need help is I would want to go on like a ship in like the 1600s, like be a part of like a, I think whatever the British naval ship, and I don't know who the captain was, but it's like master and commander. You remember that movie? Yeah. Russell Crowe. Yeah. Where they're like sailing around the world and they stop at the Galapagos and they get to do nature stuff. I think that would be super cool because back then, can you imagine like you like sail away from your homeland and you have no No clue what you're going to find. And then you land on this island halfway, halfway around the world and there's like walking dragons on it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like that would just be nuts, man. It's like, yeah, there's real life dragons. Yeah. What was that movie about? Was it a war? Or was it explore? Was it like a crazy it, storm? It was no. It was there was. I, I want to say it was a French ship, and it was like you know one of the times, hundreds of times that England and France have been at war with each other, and they were patrolling, and so they were both in the same area, and it was a cat and mouse mm. trying to capture this other ship. And it was like just ship versus ship in the Pacific. <laughs> like that's all it was. But it was good. I remember I saw it in movie theaters and it was just like ever so slightly out of focus. And I was like, I don't know if this is me. I think it's a bad thing. We were in a bad theater the other night that was slightly out of focus. Yeah. Drove me crazy. Yeah. And then. Not the other night. I was fine the other night. This was a little bit worse. And I, but it was enough for me to be like, man, that was weirdly shot. Like, eh. and then I watched it again. I was like, oh, it was just way out of focus the whole time. Huh. Which is really annoying. Yeah. To see it because it was cool. And Paul Bettany was in that? He was. It's like the second time that him and Russell Crowe yeah. worked together. He was like the naturalist. Mm. But I think just like, you know, the adventure of like being on a ship and like. Was it you that told me the eye patch thing? Did you tell me that the I other day? I did tell you the eye patch thing. Is that real? I think it's real. For the listeners at home, here's why pirates wore eye patches. Not just pirates, sailors in general. Because when they go, they go from above deck to below deck. You go from extreme sunlight to extreme darkness. And so your eyes 
take a minute to adjust. So to compensate for that, they have one eye that's always dark. And so when they go below deck, they just slide that eye patch over. And now they have an eye that's adjusted to the darkness below. So they don't have to pause and be like, I can't see anything. And they just go down and go. And then when they come back up, I think they, I think they're screwed. They just still have to be like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, so do they, the smart thing would just to be put the eye patch on like a couple of minutes before you go down. Yeah. I don't think they're out there in the sunlight all day like that. That would get really, that would be hard on your eyes. But if you're going up and down. But speaking of movies, did you notice that in Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, what's her name, had an eye patch on when she was in the desert shooting? I noticed that. Yeah. And you and it was because of that, you think? No, I don't know what it was for. I think it was just to like block the sand from her eye, maybe? I don't know. But that eye was closed. I don't know why she had yeah, it. Yeah, okay, because, okay. It so looked cool. She was shooting a gun with a scope on it Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna move the mic (laughs) that doesn't make any sense you're already you're already closing that eye and now i'm no longer a human you gotta hold it i think you turned it off i think i figured it out there you go oh yeah Uh, oh so when we weren't we were just you gotta hold it uh, and if you like hold it and move it around it turns it off People don't know what we just discovered. No. <laughs> that okay, so your stuff is you're you're such the outdoorsman. Like that's just your thing. I think it's yeah, I just love the adventure of it all. Have you always been? I think so. I think I've always liked being outside and doing that kind of stuff. It's just ironic because like I lived in Chicago for like 10 years and didn't leave a city, but I think I've always, I've, I've always loved it. I've always loved, you know, as a kid, when I didn't read, I love, I still loved like fantasy adventure stuff. So like castles and like quests and dark woods and all that kind of stuff. And then in terms of like, you know, I've always been down for a good like mountain climbing movie or rock climbing movie or kind of whatever. I think it's just the beauty of all of the stuff, like the world, you know, all the stuff in the world. Um, It's just so cool. And then you get to go into it and you're like, whoa, like if you go to the redwoods and stuff like that in California, it's just like you feel so tiny and like you're like in, you know, for me is like, Oh, I'm on um, indoor. It's like I'm in indoor. You know what I mean? Hanging out with the Ewoks. It's awesome. And yeah. so, you know, I'm, I'm decently good about getting out there. I'm not the best. I'm not the best about it. I wish I would go more. I wish I would allow myself to go more, but I'm not great about planning. But if anybody's like, let's go, I'm always down to go. So those would be my, those would be my places. I guess I would. Here, okay. Here's a, here's what I do. Um, I would, uh, I would sail oh, how a ship. How long are you going to be at these places? I mean, Lewis and Clark, you're there for however a year? long. That's Two how long years? it took them. Two years, maybe. Yeah, I think it takes you like, yeah. Warren Buffett. Y- well, here's how I figured it out. I go sailing first. Okay. Right. And I get paid because I get, as a sailor, I get a wage, Mm -hmm. right? Which is silver coins. And I also get some booty (laughs) from whatever (laughs) ships we plunder. Right. And then I go to Lewis and Clark. Now I've got some actual coinage Mm -hmm. and it's a hundred years old. So it's going to be valuable. Okay. And, I sell that to get, you know, supplies and stuff for my thing. And then, you know, while I'm on Lewis and Clark, maybe I hold a, a maybe I hold a Spanish doubloon in my pocket. And then on the Lewis and Clark adventure, maybe I have like a musket or something. And then I come back to 1950s. I go to a pawn shop, sell it, get like 
thousand dollars or more, whatever it's worth for it, walk over to Berkshire Hathaway and say, Hey, Mr. Warren Buffett, I'd like to invest this thousand dollars and then I'm out. I'm only in the fifties for like 10 minutes, which is great because I don't want to be there that long. But the other places I'm there for like years, which I'm down with. We just wrote a movie. (laughs) (laughs) How to get rich through time travel. (laughs) There we go. Oh, we just wrote a self-help book. Yeah. That's fantastic. You did it. Yeah. I didn't know where it was going to come from at the beginning. Now I figured it out. Yeah. Just follow your passions, man. It always works. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 